This episode is about asking an obnoxious amount of questions, challenging the system, and taking time to understand what our options are. Hello, welcome to Earth Care Mini. I'm your host, Sarah Christie, and I'm on a mission to make climate change an approachable and not so overwhelming conversation for everyone. Now, normally, this is the podcast where we meet climate experts, heroes, activists, entrepreneurs, and get their take on how we can help save the planet. And that's still the case, but since we all need to be involved with climate action and the climate crisis is happening as we speak, I wanted to share some of the lessons that I've learned, I'm unlearning, and I'm still learning with respect to this planet and the people on it. The lessons are big, but the episodes are mini. Consider them two bite brownie sized episodes for the planet. I'm going to start off by saying in no way. Am I about to give financial advice or tell you where to invest? But I am about to tell you my personal experience with trying to get my money out of oil. Buckle up. If we've never met before, hey, how are you doing? Thank you so much for listening to Earth Care. I live in Canada where oil and gas make a ton of money for us. I actually did a quick Google search just to see where we're at for the year. And the first five companies on the list of the 10 biggest industries by revenue in Canada are as follows. Number five new car dealers. Number four, oil drilling and gas extraction. Number three, gasoline and petroleum wholesaling in Canada. Number two, gasoline and petroleum bulk stations in Canada. And coming in at number one, commercial banking in Canada. So if you want to make money in Canada, that really sets the tone with how to go about it, right? The issue there is that one of the conversations that is constantly had when talking about sustainability, climate action, It's defunding oil and gas companies and investing in green technology. In Canada, we have five big banks that are among the top funders globally for the fossil fuel industry. So you see, that list makes way more sense now, right? The banks make the money because they invest in these companies, and the companies keep thriving because the banks are helping to keep them afloat. It's a vicious cycle. Actually, this is wild. According to Banking on a Better Future, an organization here in Canada, these banks have collectively invested $1 trillion into the fossil fuel industry. Then you go to the websites of these banks and these oil companies, and they all have these neat little sustainability reports that are over 100 pages, so who has time to read them, where they're all talking about their plans to be net zero, carbon neutral by 2030. Something smells like greenwashing here. Now, I'm a broadcaster whose last official math class was in the first semester of grade 11. Math is not my thing. Talking investing, money, stocks, historically, I'm out. But that was a personal choice a personal path that I wrote for myself. Now that I know about the urgent need to divert our money from oil, it's up to me to rewrite my path. Again, I'm not about to give financial advice. And I'm also speaking from a place of no kids, no university tuition to currently pay for, so not only do I have a bit more time to go to the banks, book these meetings, do this research, I also have a bit more wiggle room when it comes to pulling my money away from something that most people here in Canada have said will help make me money. So, okay, time to rewrite my story. I have investment accounts because years ago, a good friend of mine who happened to go to school for finance said, Sarah, here's exactly what you need to do. Here's what you need to ask for. And I haven't really questioned it since. I've booked meetings at the bank just to check in and I'd ask things like, hey, this thing that I set up, is it working? They would give me these wishy-washy surface level answers and I would leave being more confused than ever. So this time, I booked a meeting with the bank with a very strict purpose. Stop investing in oil. I researched questions to ask beforehand, which I'm going to break down. I even brought a notebook to write down everything. I was not leaving that office until I truly felt confident with digesting the information that was given. What I learned in that meeting, though, was mind-blowing. Okay, first, can you show me where my money is going? Not entirely. This is because I was not doing my own trading, right? Managing my own account. I was basically paying for a service for someone else to invest my money into a fund. Pretty common. You might even do the same thing. So they just invest in whatever fund they think looks good at the time. So they can't really locate where the money is being poured into. Mutual funds. That right there. I don't like that. The fact that there was absolutely no way to trace where my money was going had so many fire alarms going off in my head, right? That means it could be going into oil, animal agriculture, tobacco, Big old nope. Well, what is my next option? Because I want to be able to know where my money is going. 
I can apparently manage my own investing through their website. Again, it's mutual funds. So there are a bunch of these clusters of companies and industries that they've grouped together for whatever reason, and you just select which ones you want to invest in. Easy peasy, using this tool. So we tested out the tool. We started typing in things that I was looking for, right? ESG, which is Environment, Social, Governance. And lots of options came up, but then you read more about them. You dig a little deeper, and it's all going to oil companies and other big banks. Sorry, what? So, okay, let's try typing in other words, see what options are out there. We typed in sustainability, environmental, ethical, same thing. Literally every time it was all major oil companies, major car companies, major banks. Why? Well, all of these companies now have sustainability initiatives in place. That's true. Like I mentioned earlier, they have these sustainability reports that are well over 100 pages. And I've actually read a bunch of them. And they do a really incredible job of making you think that they're going to save the world and everything is sunshine and rainbows. But there is enough science out there, including the most recent IPCC report, which is the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, which was reviewed by 195 members saying that hey guys, we really need to stop funding oil and gas ASAP Rooney. But because these companies have these sustainability initiatives in place, according to the criteria that the banks have set out for whatever they're going to consider green or ethical, suddenly all of these major companies are being deemed sustainable. If you're like me and have run away from math and numbers for as long as possible, by now it would have been pretty easy to toss up the white flag, right? Okay, it just looks like this is the situation we're in here in Canada if we want to invest. Oh well. But especially after this next part. So we're still in the meeting. I'm not loving any of the options that have been presented to me yet. What is my next step? Well, I can use another tool that the bank offers to essentially become a day trader. I can monitor everything on my own. I can choose the companies one by one. I can get a business suit and go yell at screens every day on Wall Street. What? Okay, this isn't happening, though. The person I had a meeting with was so patient. They could clearly see that this was a hilarious option and not even going to be considered. They did, though, tell me about all of the tutorials and webinars that the bank offers online for free to help understand investing and get trained in it. But I have a very full-time job and would still like a life and would rather not invite that stress into my life. So I can now see on the clock that the meeting is almost over and I'm far from any of the answers or results that I had hoped for. But... This is a major bank, and in my naive head, everyone is talking about getting their money out of oil. So why is this so complicated? So I asked, have other people been asking about this? Well, according to the person that I had a meeting with, I was the first. He explained that especially right now with housing prices, the cost of living with inflation, unfortunately, keeping your money in oil, the biggest source of energy in Canada right now, is just the safer option. But how are we defining that word safe? There are a lot of companies in Canada that we rely on that basically are choosing our path. They're making decisions for us. Think about it. We have only a handful of airlines, which is why they can make prices so high, right? They know we don't have other options. Same deal for telecommunications and almost the same deal for banks. The easy and convenient option is to go to the big bank who has it all figured out. We trust that they're massive and by now they know what they're doing, so... I do empathize and understand with anyone who is feeling like they have to stay with the big bank in Canada and they feel like that's their only option. The alternatives aren't nearly as advertised and unless you have time to book the meetings, make the phone calls, or just happen to know someone who can help, it's really not an easy process. So for me right now, I know I'm in a position where I can take this air quotes risk and divert my money from the fossil fuel industry. I say air quotes risk with an asterisk, right? Because right now I'm comparing the risk of an unconventional form of investing with the risk of our climate crisis, which I think is worth a really big conversation. And in fact, after the meeting with the bank and seeing how sneakily trapped we are, staying there was no longer an option. I was getting my money out of there. So here's where I lucked out. I happen to know someone who works for an independent financial firm, so I was able to connect with him and say, hey, are there other options? Good news. There are. 
There are a lot of other options. So right now, an independent firm is the path I'm going down. Together, we've been going through mutual funds that truly align with me and what I'm fighting for, what I believe in. Now, side note, I actually Googled the definition of a mutual fund just to make sure we're all on the same page when I say it because I truly have to pause sometimes and make sure that I'm even following this bouncing ball. And it occurs to me that I've said mutual fund at least five times in this podcast. So here we go. According to Google... A mutual fund is a company that pools money from many investors and invests the money in securities such as stocks, bonds, and short-term debt. The combined holdings of the mutual fund are known as the portfolio. Investors buy shares in mutual funds. Thank you, Google. The problem with the bank was they only had so many mutual funds available to build into your portfolio. But that wasn't the case with this independent firm. So again, I asked, but this time to the independent firm, are a lot of people making these requests in Canada? And I was gently told, no. In Canada, they've really built a system that makes it seem like this is our only option and our only true way to succeed. But as I write this, I'm going to challenge that because people in the East Coast here in Canada are cleaning up after Hurricane Fiona. People in the West Coast are cleaning up after forest fires. Yes, both of those things happen yearly, but it's the rate at which they're increasing and the force of their increase that we can no longer ignore. Climate scientist and voice of hope Catherine Hayhoe wrote this past week, was it caused by climate change is the most common question we hear about an extreme weather event. But when it comes to a hurricane, that's the wrong question. The right one is, how much worse did climate change make it? So is it a financial risk to pull my money out of oil? I suppose, sure, but it seems like a bigger risk to keep my money in it. So I'm choosing to challenge the system deciding that these big companies don't get to choose my fate or write our future. I still have a lot of learning to do. In fact, I still have a handful of upcoming meetings to properly finesse this new portfolio, which I'm sure I'm going to leave so confused, but I've never felt so confident in my knowledge of money, and I've never felt so empowered with my knowledge of investing. And I hope this story helps you feel empowered in situations where you don't agree with the outcome. So for me, okay, this whole thing was about investing, but for you, perhaps it's a clothing company that can't tell you if their employees are paid a living wage. So you start shopping somewhere else. Maybe it's a grocery store that has taken advantage of inflation by increasing their costs even more. Yes, that is in fact happening right now. And you start shopping at a local market instead. When something doesn't feel right in our core, we don't have to accept it. We can remain in the driver's seat. These companies need our money to survive. So even when we aren't aware of it, we are in control. And hopefully this episode serves as a reminder of just that. You are in control. Thank you so much for checking out Earth Care and letting this podcast be a part of your day. Don't forget to hit follow or subscribe, whatever that button is on the device that you're listening to this episode on, and then you'll know when new episodes are out. And if you have time, hey, leave a review. I would love to know what's on your mind, what's been clicking with you, what topics we should cover next. And as I'm behind the scenes gathering the next round of interviews, those reviews are a big help with that. So I really do appreciate that. We can also connect online at Earth Care Show on Instagram and TikTok and earthcareshow.com for more information. I'll talk to you later.